I love these plants. I tell everybody to get one of these plants. Box wine for the win. Have this. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I love you. Love you. Thank you for helping me. Today I want to talk about Platycerium bifurcatum. I need to water it for Betty. I have two staghorn ferns. They live in my bedroom and they are both mounted to wood. They are an epiphytic fern. So their roots are really just used to attach themselves to trees, mainly in Australia and like the Pacific islands. Platycerium bifurcatum is the one that is, mo is the most prevalent in cultivation. There's, they're also called staghorn ferns. So there are a couple type of platycerium. I think there's like 20 different species or something like that. Um, again, I'll correct myself when, when I'm wrong. This one I think is a platycerium bifurcatum. It was sold to me as a French mini staghorn, but it is not a French staghorn. Those get way bigger and way more silver. This is very green. It's also very wilty. You can see here, let me do this side. You can see this chunk right here is very floppy. Some of these are still pretty firm. So I need to water this. I usually water these guys during the winter about once a week and I got them right at the end of the growing season. So I need to adjust my schedule to be able to water these guys more often. And it's not really me adjusting my schedule. It's me remembering. These guys are native to Australia. I have two of them. I have this one and the larger one right behind me. The larger one is also slightly darker green and more silver. It grows a lot more slowly as well because when I mounted it, I destroyed the roots. So um, there are moose head ferns, there are staghorn ferns, there are elk's horn ferns. There's all sorts of platyceriums out there and there's only one that's native to the Americas. So again, I'm just a plant lover and nerd. I am not a botanist or anything like that, but let me turn it this way. And let me turn it this way. So you can see here, if this was a normal plant, this would be the root ball. And this does contain the root ball. This is sphagnum moss plus a little bit of substrate. So if I squeeze it, like that, you can tell it's really, really dry and I need to water it like probably two days ago. Staghorn ferns don't mind drying out quite as much as other ferns, which is nice. The brown bit here is called a basal frond or a shield frond. This grows in a specific pattern to help protect the root ball. So if I turn it like this, I have one that's kind of pointing up and if I turn it back like this, you can kind of see, again, it's pointing up. This would, in the wild, help it collect like debris, dead bugs, water, and help kind of insulate the root ball in general. Um, it is the basal frond, so it doesn't do anything aside from protect the plant. These leaves, however, are the fertile fronds. Part of the reason they are called staghorns fer staghorn ferns is because on the underside of the leaves, this is where the spores will collect and they will turn brown, kind of like antlers, but also it looks like antlers anyway. Um, they will start developing longer tips. I love these plants. I tell everybody to get one of these plants because it's easy to just hang on the wall. You do need some light to grow these guys. Um, I have them in a much darker corner than they should be in and they're still growing, but they are not growing as fast as they were last year. So this guy has put out it's starting to put out another frond down there. You can see the little white buddy there. You can see the screws and the fishing wire that I used initially to wrap the plant in sphagnum and then secure it to the board. You can do it with like a burlap sack and just plop it in there. You can do kind of whatever you want. I got this cheap wood plank. I think they use them for weddings, but this is untreated. And then I got this bracket here and there's another bracket that fits just right under it and it hangs on my wall. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's how I secure these guys to my wall. Let me get my other one. So this guy is much bigger. It's also in more rough shape. You can see that there are some dying fronds. That's not a problem. I probably fertilized it too much, honestly, because these guys don't need a whole lot. This is damage from lack of water, again. But you can see how much bigger this guy is. You can also see that this one has 
the the pointy frond parts. This is made out of old pallet. There are three boards, and I used to live in Ohio, so I put them together and I was like, Ohio, sort of, but not really. So again, this just has the cleat on the back and it's much bigger in general. Um, it has fewer leaves overall because this is one rhizome compared to this guy. This guy was didn't even have any basil and uh, basil fronds when I got it. So I was able to section this this guy off. Probably I probably could have split it into four sections, but I damaged the roots too much. So I only really ended up getting three and I kept this one for myself and gave two away to someone else. And people love it. It's, it's a really cool plant. You can see it's gray on the undersides of this leaf. And this new leaf is coming out as well. Those I believe are called trichorms, just like on air plants. Um, it helps to protect the plant from more sun damage because these guys do live in trees under dappled sunlight, but they live on the tree. So some of them are gonna get direct sun, some of them won't. And depending on which platycerium you get, some of them can get more sun than others, obviously. And some of them can take more drought than others. A lot of people grow these outside on chains and they get huge. Oh, what's that? I think I found a spider web. Gross. Better only be a spider web and not a spider mite web. I know that there are some people who take five gallon buckets and just invert the plant, but I don't have a five gallon bucket. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just take them to the sink and water them because these guys are dry. And I think I'll take you along with me. It's gonna be weird. Okay, so sorry about the lighting in here. It is what it is, I guess. And please excuse my mess. I made bagels this morning, so it was awesome. Anyway, after I make sure that, that the sink doesn't have any soap or chemicals in it, I set it in the sink. Plants don't really touch that, but that's whatever I still Make sure. And that's how I water them. So because the sphagnum moss was so dry, I'm going to let this soak in for a few minutes and then I'm gonna come back and do it again. I water these two for a few minutes or seconds, I guess, to get them wet initially. And then I go get my orchids and let my orchids hang out for a few minutes um, while I re-water these guys because I don't want them to get this dry for very long. This smaller one especially dries out a lot faster. So I'm gonna go get my orchids, re-water these, and, that's, and then hang them back on the wall. That's pretty much all I do. All right, so that's how I take care of my platycerium bifurcatum. Um, I don't have them right now because they are dripping with water. I'm, after they dry and kind of chill out for about an hour, I'll put them back on the wall. They're happy. They don't need me to do anything else for them. They would probably enjoy some brighter light, but I am afraid if I give the, that to them, um, they will take over the entire apartment if I have anything to say about it. But I really don't because they're plants. They just do their thing, man. That is it for now. Yeah, keep on making plant mistakes and we can fix them together, I guess. Thanks so much for watching my channel. Uh, have a great day. Bye.